I did, and I offered you a second. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you not hear me? Are you on you? No, I'm not on you. Sir. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a request from the Brunswick Golden Isles Chamber of Commerce to use gas one bluff and 12 counting Friday, April 22nd, 2022, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, to 12 counting Sunday, April 24th, 2022, at no cost for the Chamber of Experience. 
depends upon the police department approval of the public permit. 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 Permit.
Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Property appraisal items. Item eight. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve the real and personal property corrections and exemptions as recommended by the Board of Assessors and the Chief Appraiser at their Thursday, December 16, 2021 meeting for clarification that this does not approve a tax refund. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Okay. I'm Yolanda Ward with the Property Appraisal Office. The uh, Board of Assessors are requesting approval for both the exempt, for both property, real property and personal property correction and exemption items from their December 16, 2021 agenda, which is attached. And if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer those. Yeah, I thought I, I had one. Um, there he is. Walter, you, do you have any questions, Commissioner no, Kowalski? No, sir. Uh, yeah. I thought you had one. I, yeah. I, the uh, Rich Products Corporation. Yes, sir. Um, I, could you could you explain that one? The originally, when the Rich Products uh, submitted their personal property return, uh, it included both their free ports as well as, as well as the other items that were not um, not free port exemption or not free port items. Um, we had to bring it back before the board to bring back twelve million two 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 eight ninety nine, which were free port exemption items which should be exact, uh, exempt from taxation, we had to correct that. So we had to bring it back for our board for approval. So originally, that they were originally taxed on both the free court items as well as the other items. Okay, I'm looking at this one for the, the, the like $30 million. Is yes, that, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So is that what you're talking about? Yes, what's, sir. What's, I'm not understanding. Free, free port, what is that? Free port items are the items that will be transited out there, like the raw material items. That's the $12 million um, value there. That was actually, they were actually billed on that originally, and they should not have been. So uh, the taxpayers came in and brought the bill and said that this amount was a little higher than normal, and we went back and reviewed and saw where um, we included that we did not <coughs> exclude the free port items out of that taxable amount. And that brought it down to? Uh, the difference of what's that, eighteen thousand? Yeah. Okay. But they've gotten, they've get, have gotten that exemptions every year. It's just that particular last year, just to not allocate that amount out. Okay. All right. Okay. If there are no other questions, then I'll entertain a motion. I move to recommend the board of commissioners approve the real and personal property corrections and exemptions. As recommended by the Board of Assessors and Chief Appraiser at their Thursday, December 16, 2021 meeting with clarification, this does not approve a tax refund. Second. Uh, it's been motioned and seconded that we approve the item 8 as presented. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Budget and grants item 9. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners accept the FY22 summer reading program grant and authorize a revenue and expenditure increase in the amount of $1,500 for the Marshes of Glen Libraries with the funding to be provided by the Georgia Public Library Service. Ms. Mullis, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, yes, so we got money for summer reading. All right. Dollars. It's always good to get money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions? All right. Entertain a motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners accept the FY22 Summer Reading Program grant and authorize a, re a revenue and expenditure increase in the amount of $1,500 for the Marshall of Glenn Library with the funding to be provided by the Georgia Public Library Service. Second, um, item 9 has been motioned and properly second that we accept the uh, um, grant as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Right. Item 10, consider recommending Board of Commissioners adopt the resolution to amend the FY21-22 budget. Um, Judy? 
Um, yes, these are um, just a list of the resolutions and items that most of them have already been passed by you guys. Okay. We'll just list them out. Any concerns or questions? No, sir. Okay, I entertain a motion. Move to recommend the Board of Commissioners adopt the resolution to amend the FY21-22 budget. Second. Item 10 has been properly motioned and seconded as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Contracts and procurement. Item 11. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve the concession agreement with Golden Isles Carriage and Trail at Three Oaks Farm LLC to offer horseback riding services at Blythe Island Regional Park. I think this is a great idea. Good afternoon again, mm -hmm. Commissioners. Um, so, several months ago, pro probably in July of last year, um, Commissioner Neal, Commissioner Tossison met with the Blythe Island Park Advisory Board Chairman John Craven and myself to talk about a variety of projects at the park and things they'd like to see. One of the things that was was kind of mentioned was equestrian at Blythe Island Regional Park. And so um, John Craven and I, you know, started working on this and we, um, we met with the folks that, uh, a lady named Tommy Crum, she's a local person who provides the horseback riding services on Jekyll Island. And uh, we talked to her about, uh, set, up, set up a meeting and talked to her about this, the exploring the possibility of bringing that service to uh, Blythe Island Regional Park. And um, over the last couple of months, worked with uh, Tommy um, and uh, Claire in the county attorney's office to draft an agreement that would uh, meet the guidelines of the National Park Service, the you know, Department of Interior that <coughs> apply to the deed restrictions associated with Black Valley Regional Park. Um, looking at the things that, that she would need, Tommy would need, the things that would be good for the county to bring an agreement forward that we could work to try to get horseback riding on the trails and such at the park. So um, after, after you know, a couple of months working together, uh, we've come to what I feel like is a good agreement for the county to move forward with if, if this is the direction that you guys choose to do. I, I know y'all have had the opportunity to read the agenda and maybe look through the agreement, but, um, and I'm happy to touch on some of the points of the agreement if y'all are interested in that. But um, basically what, uh, what Ms. Crum would do is that she would bring, uh, they would book their own horseback riding um, rides in the park online like they do with the Jekyll Island and then on any given day they may have enough to bring horses to the park and so they would bring horses to the park every day that they have rides booked. They would utilize the residence area that's um, when you come into Black Island Regional Park on the immediate left we call it the residence area because at one time the manager of the park actually lived on site there. There's a facility there, a barn that's, um, that's been you know, utilized, underutilized for, for many years since that uh, since the manager no longer uh, moved there out of, out of there until 2015. So she would propose to use that area. It's about one acre. Um, she's got I've, I've got a map here of how she would develop this area, and she proposes to um, invest her own personal funds to upgrade that area to suit her needs to be able to provide um, the, the fencing that she needs. The uh, mounting block that she needs, make, converting the area to like an office with a workspace, um, tack area, area of this, uh, a vehicle parking area for customers, provide a portal lit, things like that, um, make the changes that she needs to make. And I think the investment could be as much as, you know, fifty to $60,000 uh, of an investment to make that area, bring it up to what she would need to be able to have her operations based out of there. There would be no horses boarded at the park overnight. They would never stay on site. They'd be brought to the park every day. They'd be, they'd be taken from the park every day. The rides would be offered pretty much during business hours of the park. Um, the last trail ride would end at least an hour before the close of the park gate so that the customers can get out of the park you know, through the park gate. There may be an employee on site that would be cleaning up the horses, brushing them and sadly and taking the saddles off and securing them and putting them on the trailer. But there would not be any customers in the park after um, regular park hours of operation. The, um, she would um, collect all the revenue for the trail rides and then um, we'd have a 5% um, take of that, of what she's collected. Um, that's kind of her standard thing is what she does with Jekyll Island. She would bear the brunt of all the property insurance and liability insurance. She would uh, bear the cost of whatever utilities are associated with that residence area, so water, electric, um, 
sewer there, no sewer there. But those, all those costs, she would handle those things at that residence area. And it would bring a nice new feature to the county park um, to have something different there. Um, the, the agreement is written so that um, she and her team, with the, um, with the input and approval of staff, would cut the trails that would be used for the horseback riding trails through the park. We would, it would not interfere with the current trails and system that's in the park, so it would not interfere with pedestrian trails or any of the trails that are, that are utilized. It, it would utilize some of the unused area and, and prop around the canoe trails and some of the back area that if you're looking at the park from 303, I would say, you know, looking at a map, you would, this side of the park, the unutilized side, not the, not the lake, this is the side of the primitive camping areas and marina. Now there would be possibly be a trail that would kind of cut on the on the interior of the lake just to have a nice nice experience for people riding the horseback. So, so what we're proposing is a, a one year agreement for the initial term. It would be sub, it would have the opportunity to renew for four additional one year terms under the same terms and conditions. The fee schedule that she's proposed and the schedule of operations is all within the agreement that we've provided to you. She would not be able to um, increase any of her fees significantly without an actual change in the contract. Uh, the contract would allow her to increase her fees 2% uh, one, uh, on a one, like once a year, she could go up 2% on a fee, and she could go up 2% the next year, but she would cap it at 5% total from the initial agreement. So she, her fees that as they exist today could not go up more than 5% from what they are over the life of the, the five-year you know, term of the agreement. If it did that, that would have to be a renegotiated new agreement brought forward to the Board of Commissioners to agree to. So this would be year one of five? This would be year one of five. Um, and with her making this pretty significant investment, we felt like that was a fair thing to do was to give that option. That if everything's working well, it can renew automatically for, you know, for four additional one-year terms. Uh, there are uh, termination clauses that you know either party could exit the contract if wanted to with a 90-day notice things like that, but um, she, she's, um, she's very organized. They're going to, uh, on the trails, they're going to have a, a utility vehicle or a golf cart. They're going to have a person that's going to make sure and be responsible for a removal of manure every day. It's not going to remain on site. They're going to use it back at their farm. And um, I have visited the farm um, and met with Ms. Crum uh, multiple times, met with her father, who's going to do a lot of the actual work in, in in refurbishing and renovating the barn area to make it usable for them. I'm very impressed with what I've seen and I think this will be a good fit for, um, for our park. It'll be something interesting to bring to, uh, to the park, not only for the campers and people that are in the park, but also the community that they don't, you know, they may not want to be tried out in the sun. They may, may would like to have a trail ride that's in the shade and Carville out, out and, and see the beauty of Blythe Island Regional Park. So uh, how many horses would it be at a time? It would depend on how many rides she has booked, but I feel like it, on any given day, there may be 10 to 12 horses at any given time. Okay. Um, and everybody that, that uh, rides with her, they have to watch a, a safety video before they actually ride. They're required to wear helmets. She provides those types of things for them, and they have very experienced guides. She ha I think on her farm she has maybe 70 horses, and some of them are focused more on carriage ride horses. They pull the carriages. Um, some of them are more trail rides, and so um, she doesn't work the same horses every day. They, in the morning, she's got a, um, a lady named Sue that works for her. Sue goes out and assesses the horses and their mental state and their, um, you know, their whatever at each morning, and she decides that morning what horses she's going to take because she kind of monitors their, how they feel. It's like some mornings you get up and you don't feel so great, so... You, you know, she, if she sees them that they're, they're not feeling so great, she'll pick one, you know, she'll pick the ones that are ready to go and haven't been... Do they have carriages as well? They do have carriages. Um, she's proposing that they can do carriage rides in the park as well, possibly, you know, holiday-type rides through the park with the carriages and things like that. So um, that, that definitely those things could be done as well. So, um, I think it'd be a neat thing to bring to the park and see, you know, we, we've got a year to see how it goes, and I feel like... Um, She'll be easy to work with, and we'll be um, and make sure she's good stewards at the park, and we'll, you know, we'll stay in close touch and make sure it goes really well and it's a mutually beneficial relationship. The uh, five percent is different than what we normally. Uh, it is because it's usually what a seventy thirty. Yes, sir. Usually with like program instructors, there's a seventy thirty split. Um, mm -hmm. 
part of the reason for the five percent is again is matching what she the relationship she has. Um, I think you know with other other places that she does this, but also because she is willing to, to invest fifty to sixty thousand dollars of her personal funds into refurbishing that area, which it currently is an unused area, and also she's willing to bear the uh, the cost of the um, the utilities associated with that. So those are some things that that, that is being paid into it to the county that we won't have to to pay out. That, She'll, she'll handle so. So, Will, you looked at this? Uh, clear in our office now. Um, of the form of the agreement actually comes from the Department of Interior because they have to approve this um, even before we can go into effect. Um, we did a, another one recently um, for a laundry machine yes. in the campground. And basically, the Department of Interior has a form they send you that says, here are the required parts of this contract. Um, but Claire looks at, has looked at it, and she's so drafted, she's satisfied that it protects the count in every way that it can. Okay, any other uh, questions? Okay. I entertain a motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the concession agreement with the Golden Isles Carriage and Trail at Three Oaks Farm LLC to offer horseback riding services at Blythe Island Regional Park. Second. It's been motion and seconded that we approve item 11 as presented. All in favor, say aye. 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 Right. Thank you. Let's get it approved. Yes, and then, and you think about it. That's a lot of. That's a lot to bring, ten to twelve horses, transport them there and back every day. It's a lot of work. I've, so I've watched them do it on Jacob. They, they have about twelve. How far away is they? Um, um, they're out on eighty two off of Emanuel Church Road. Oh, Oyster Road. It's it's out there a little ways. I've I've been out there. It's it's very nice. Um, My daughter, when she was younger, used to ride out there, so I I know the farm. Okay. All right. Item twelve. Consider recommending the board of commissioners authorize county <coughs> personnel to initiate the process to develop specifications and scope of work. Issue invitations for bids to repair and resurface the Selden Park tennis courts. The District Five capital allocation as the intended funding source. Thank you. The, there's two tennis courts at Selden Park. They are situated right outside the gymnasium. They are, um, are badly in need of, of repair and resurfacing. And we, um, at, the, at the request of Commissioner Booker, we're bringing this item forward to try to, to uh, get this project out for bid and hopefully come in at a good price that will be brought back to you for consideration to get to award using District 5 capital allocation. Right. As we as we found out, it's not cheap to redo tennis courts. <laughs> Any other questions? No, sir. Ready for a motion? Yes. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners authorize the county personnel to initiate the process to develop specifications, scope of work, and issue invitations for bids to repair and resurface the Selden Park tennis courts with District 5 capital allocation as the intended funding source. Second. Item 12 has been properly motioned and seconded as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Right. Item 13, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners issue a purchase order to Miracle Recreation Equipment Company using the SourceWell Competitive Contract Purchasing Program in the amount of $62,192.56 to purchase the new playground equipment at Turtle River Park the funding to be provided by District 1 capital allocation. Okay. Commissioners, this is a project brief that I'm bringing forward at the request of Commissioner Tossison. Uh, Turtle River Park is located on Blythe Island in, um, in District 1, and uh, at the, in conversations that he has had with his uh, residents in, in that district, they requested a new playground. And we have uh, obtained uh, a Concept rendering and is that, is that in the boat landing? It's in the boat landing, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I have a black and white copy. I'm not sure what you, if you guys have it, but the color might be a little bit different when it, the actual color. But this is what we're talking about, and it would be full replacement of the existing playground. There is a tree in the playground, and we will do our best to maintain that tree within the playground. But I think um, I think Commissioner Tossin, you know, would like to support this moving forward using District One capital allocation. I don't have any questions, Alan. Okay, entertain a motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners issue a purchase order to Miracle Recreation Equipment Company using the SourceWell Competitive Contract Purchasing Program in the amount of $62,192.56 to purchase new playground equipment 
at Turtle River Park with funding to be provided by the District 1 capital allocation. Second. Item 13 has been properly motioned and seconded um, to be approved as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Item 14, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners rescind the memorandum of understanding with the SSI Athletic Association, Inc. Approved by the Board of Commissioners on June 17, 2021 for renovations for, to uh, Mallory Park. Um, commissioners, um, if you recall, uh, we brought forward a, a plan from the St. Simons Athletic Association to renovate the ball fields at Mallory Park. Um, with the, the improvements in park, you know, field renovations and parking improvements were supposed to have begun in June or after the contract for the memo of understanding was approved and then it was scheduled to be completed in time for this spring baseball softball season. Um, for a variety of reasons, I think mainly because I don't think, I think while I think, I believe they had the financial commitment to fund the entire project, I don't know that they actually had the funds in their account and the MOU as it was written stated that they actually had to have those funds sitting in their account before they could begin the work. So uh, the SSAA did not sign the MOU even though the board approved it, so it was never actually fully executed if you look at it that way. The board signed it and approved it, but the, the organization did not. And, uh, and so we kind of lost the window of opportunity to, uh, to do anything at this point because we're getting ready to start our baseball softball season. And so for that reason, we, we felt like it was, uh, speaking with the county attorney, the best option was to rescind the original MOU. And then um, hopefully, uh, we've already been talking with them about you know, moving forward with that if they're interested in doing so, and I know that they are. And so that hopefully it'll be a point in time in the future where we will bring forward a new MOU and try to get that project moving forward. This is the one we met over there and looked at all of them. Okay. Exactly. They're, they're still very interested in that. I just think that it's, it's been a busy year for some of those folks. They're volunteers, and I just think that they've not been able to do all that they had hoped to do in the time period that we were kind of the crunch that we were under. And so um, we're hoping that they will be able to do that and bring it back forward to you. To, to revisit that project in the near future. Ready, on? Yeah. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners rescind the Memorandum of Understanding with St. Simmons Island Athletic Association, approved by the Board of Commissioners on June 17, 2021, for renovations to Mallory Park. Uh, item 14 has been second. <coughs> item 14 has been properly motioned and seconded. to be approved as presented. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Item 15. Thank you all. Yes, ma'am. Uh, item 15, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve the contract with Tyler Technologies for the new IS World Tax and Camera System for a total of 2,000, two million, two million, I'm sorry, two million seven hundred and ninety-two thousand three hundred and ninety-one dollars with the FY22 funding in the amount of $149,836 to, to be provided by the FY22 Information Technology Capital Budget. Deborah. Hi, good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Deborah Bragdon, IT Director. Um, I'm here today to request approval of a new tax and camera system for the county. Um, our old system is uh, we implemented, fully implemented it in 2002, and it is very cumbersome, and we're having to do a lot of stuff outside of the system, like we're doing manual processing to, um, to um, do our assessment notices and create our bills, and also to set values and just report. We're having to manually create reports, so the system is not a fully integrated system like uh, our online payments we had to upload and download and we really with the amount of money that the tax commissioner collects and um, actually commissioner tax commissioner chapman's here today if you need to ask him some questions but uh, the amount of money that we collect here at the county we really need an efficient system for the staff that is not so time consuming um, this new system, we, we looked at demos, we did our research, we did a site visit to City of Augusta, Richmond County. Um, it is um, 
It is the best system that we could find out there. It's um, a system from Tyler Technology, and we're using Tyler Technology here at the county for our Munis financial system and for our Odyssey system. So it is a company that we're very familiar with, and they do a good job. And um, this system would be a, what we call software as a service system. So that means if we have a disaster here, the system would not go down. We would still be able to access it. Um, we would not have to support the servers. The system we have now is a system that is hosted here at Glen County. Um, we would be able to work in multiple years. One thing we have to do now is wait to put the sales in later, which is very labor intensive. Um, also, we would have like fully integrate, integrated portal with our payments. So that would make it a, a lot more e easier for staff. Um, the cost over a five-year period is $2,792,391. Um, the recurring cost is about $416,000 a year after the five years. Um, in FY22, it, they prorated it, so all we would owe in FY22 is $149,836 to get us to July 1st. Um, so, do you have, you have any questions? I, I do not. No, sir, I don't either. I entertain the motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the contract with Tyler Technologies for the new IAS World Tax and CAMA system for the, for a total of $2,792,391 with the FY22 funding in the amount of $149,836 to be provided by the FY22 Information Technology Capital Budget. Second, uh, item 15 has been motion and second uh, for approval as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Item 16, consider recommending Board of Commissioners approve the second amendment to the software <coughs> as a service agreement with Tyler Technologies for the Odyssey e-notification in the amount of $8,380 for funding to be provided by the FY22 Information Technology Capital Budget. Yeah. Um, thank you. Good afternoon again, Commissioners. Um, this is a request. Um, Odyssey is our court system here in the county, and this is a request for an e-notification system function within the court system. Um, juvenile court, they explained to me that sometimes they have to get like uh, maybe up to five different people there for a court session and they have to have it within so many hours after, you know, uh, taking somebody in. And they, a lot of times they have to get a parent there, they have to get the advocate there, they have to get the attorneys there, and they have to get other people. And uh, they said if they're able to text message from the system, you know, like the attorneys and the defendants, they can get everybody there and this would prevent us having no-shows and uh, also the solicitor really wanted it. But uh, this amount of money will make this function available to anybody in any court to use it to be able to text message uh, people and notify them on court dates. Right. So, so it's for all courts. It's for all courts. If yes. they choose to use it. And, uh, and I think most of them will use it. It is yeah, all courts can use it. It's, okay. it's global. And it's uh, eight thousand three hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, motion. Move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the second amendment to the software as a service agreement with Tyler Technologies in the amount for the Odyssey e-notification in the amount of $8,380 with funding to be provided by the FY22 Information Technology Capital Budget. Second. Item 16 has been motion and, uh, and second as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Item 17, consider Recommending the Board of Commissioners approve Public Works staff to purchase $40,000 in supplies and materials for crews to improve the drainage system in Trawler Court in um, River Ridge Subdivision. <coughs> for 
funds provided by capital fund allocation for at large post number two. So. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is a uh, uh, district uh, uh, at large post two request from the Commissioner uh, Rafalski. Uh, he came in the office to talk about the flooding in that area and uh, came up with a solution. And uh, he offered to, uh, at that time, he offered to purchase the materials. Hopefully, he's still uh, offering. It's about 250 feet of linear pipes and some concrete catch basins and other things. And it'll be performed in house by public works employees. Okay. Any questions around that? Okay. Entertain them. Moves to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve public works staff to purchase 40,000 in supplies and materials for crews to improve the drainage system in Troller Court in River Ridge subdivision with funds provided by the capital fund allowance for at large post two. Second, item 17 has been motioned and properly second. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Chair. Please just take a moment. Thank you very much for passing that uh, software. And we do want to thank the Glen County IT department for doing an excellent job and due diligence in helping us get the right software. That was a big task. They did a first class job. But most importantly, we appreciate you all allowing it to happen. Okay. Out all right. Thank yes, you for showing up. Item 18 consider recommending the um, Board of Commissioners approved the Coquina drainage improvements for draining, drainage basin calculations, permitting, design, and construction bidding with funding to be provided by the American Rescue Plan Act. This is an opportunity to capture some American Rescue Act funding uh, that we've been working on lately with uh, Ms. Uh, Tamara Munson. Uh, I guess we've captured so much you cut us off. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they're going to come in at, but uh, what we've done is uh, we're also going to look not only downstream but upstream and try to capture uh, some of the uh, challenges that we may have up there on Silva and Palmetto uh, and, and then uh, uh, pipe a ditch that's been uh, made this problem and upgrade some uh, uh, cross drains to increase the uh, flow. Uh, this is also, uh, you might remember, uh, we approved the Taylor House drainage pro uh, project at, uh, on, on uh, Federica Road, which is going to get under construction here shortly. This uh, Taylor House will flow into this system, so it'll help. It'll help that because this Taylor House is going to flow up to Sylvan and come back down. So, okay. All right. Any questions, concerns? I entertain the motion. Dave, we are we are going to look at uh, Silva. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think if somebody shot that with a transit, you'd see what I'm we'll talking take a look about. At it. <coughs> Excuse me. Move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the Coquina drainage improvements for drainage basin calculations, permitting and design construction bidding with funding to be provided by American Rescue Plan Act. Second. Item 18 has been motioned and properly second for approval as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Item 19, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a contract for sidewalk repair services with the single source provider, Georgia Safe Sidewalks, Lawrenceville, Georgia, in the amount of $28,240 with funding to be provided by the Public Works FY22 operators operating budget. So Mr. Chairman, we've done some work with these folks in the past. The city also does some work with these folks. They have a proprietary system where they kind of salami slice the, the concrete uh, uh, difference and so they uh, so uh, uh, there's no more no longer a tripping hazard. Not only that, they do extensive work of finding them, locating them, uh, 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 and then uh, marking them and uh, categorizing them. And you'll see that they have an 80-page uh, report that they submitted in this, which I only printed off the first four pages. But it'll show you where exactly they're doing that. So what we do is we target areas around the county 
where we have uh, older sidewalks that are tripping hazards and we get in there and, and remove all the tripping hazards. And uh, we do that with the, these folks. If there's some areas that, uh, that are not on those maps that you think we need to address, gladly put them on the list for uh, the, the coming years. But uh, we, this is spread out through all the county. Did you see the one on front of the Lighthouse Museum? Uh, yes, we're working on that. Okay. that. That was fixed the day of. I actually, temporarily fixed the I day actually day. saw this company when I went up to the uh, ACCG thing in the, in the hall that day. It, it's interesting what they do. I'm ready, Alan, unless you've got a question. Um, no, I was just wondering, you answered it. Why we went to Lawrenceville for this, <laughs> but uh, I understand they have. There's a special. They they are actually have a special skill in doing this. So I'll entertain the motion. I move to recommend the board of commissioners approve a contract for sidewalk repair services with a single source provider, Georgia Safe Sidewalks, Lawrenceville, Georgia, in the amount of twenty-eight thousand two hundred forty dollars, with funding to be provided by the Public Works FY22 operating budget. Second. Item 19 has been motioned and properly second for approval as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Item <coughs> 20, consider recommending Board of Commissioners exercise four year option to um, the Intercontinental Commercial Services, Inc., Swanee, Georgia, for county buildings custodial services with the two additional change orders for a total contract cost of 340 $2,808 with funding to be provided by the FY22 and FY23 facilities maintenance operating budget. This is the annual uh, option year of uh, redoing our uh, custodial contract. Uh, this is the last year, the fourth year. Uh, next year we'll have to put it out for bid. These folks have done a, a very good job. Uh, so much so that the sheriff's department has asked us to uh, take over the uh, new courthouse and do the cleaning in there, and that's why they got the change order for the 2940. Uh, and then additionally, uh, added to this change order is picking up the new animal services building, uh, in which we are, it's a bigger building, and we're also increasing uh, the service from, uh, from uh, six days a week to seven days a week. So uh, they, they're in there every day doing something, cleaning. So. Uh, that, that's the cost. Next year uh, uh, we'll come back earlier and put it out for bid and, uh, and, uh, and see if these folks win it again or somebody else takes it. Okay. I know I, I, knew, I knew I went over to the courthouse when the sheriff had the, I think Dave Carver was there. I think all this came about when those two inmates took off that afternoon. He couldn't, it's just hard to keep up with them. So. What's the staffing shortages? Yeah. Ready, Alan? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the cut. No, I'm just, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm wrong line. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners exercise a fourth year option to Intercontinental Commercial Services Incorporated in Swanee, Georgia, for county buildings custodial services with two additional change orders for a total contract cost of $342,808. With funding to be provided by the FY22, FY23 facilities maintenance operating budgets. Second. Item 20 has been uh, motion and second um, to, for approval as presented. All in favor say, say aye. Aye. Item 21, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve an increase in the lawn maintenance and landscaping contract creative landscapes by $700 a month and approve an increase to the pest control contract with Knox Pest Control by $250 a month with funding to be provided by the FY22 Public Works operating budget. All right, so we had, uh, took over the, uh, there were three contracts with the uh, animal control facilities. Uh, we just talked about the custodial, the other one is lawn maintenance and pest control. I am remiss here because I did, did catch just count a mistake. It's not $250 a month we pay for pest control. I believe we pay $25 a month. So I need to, I need to add, uh, uh, I need to adjust that. That's not that much. But the lawn maintenance adds up from $275 to $700. Uh, and right now we're going to do both of them because we own both facilities. If we can work the MOU with joint water and sewer, 
Uh, maybe we could uh, put that in the MOU that they can take care of the, the lawn maintenance out of the old animal control facility. So uh, I need you to uh, change that to instead of 250, 25 bucks a month. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any questions? And I'm going to do uh, Judy, I'll no. get a new letter. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve an increase to the lawn maintenance and landscaping contract with Creative Landscapes by $700 a month and approve an increase to the pest control contact, contract with Knox Pest Control by $25 a month with funding to be provided by the FY22 Public Works Operating Budget. Second. Um, item 21 has been motioned and properly second for approval as presented. Um, well, with the necessary correction of um, not $250 a month, $25. but $25 a month for um, the Knox Pest Control. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh -huh. Item 22, consider recommending Board of Commissions approve to award the Public Safety Building Construction Renovation Project to expand the evidence room on the second floor to Saplow Building Solutions, Inc. of Brunswick, Brunswick, Georgia, in the amount of $87,500 with funding to be provided by the Capital Fund Allocation at Large Post 1. This is a project requested by the at-large uh, uh, Commissioner Post 1, uh, now Chairman uh, so Quinn, uh, their, their evidence uh, room uh, was at, uh, I think, 1,300 square feet, and that's going to give them another 2,000. Uh, and it, as you know, when you get into renovations, things start to uh, start to find some things out. So it was moving a wall here, moving a wall there. Then we found out that above the ceiling, there was nothing to the attic. And when you have an evidence room, you have to have something solid up there so somebody doesn't come in your evidence room and take something out of it. So that had to be designed, and uh, we have a, uh, uh, so this will be a secure evidence room. I think we had two bids on it. This is the lowest bidder, uh, 87.5. Uh, he is doing uh, work in the county right now. I believe he's doing the tax commissioner's uh, hallway and uh, something for the fire department. So uh, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, pleased with the work he's done so far at Sapelo Building Solutions. Okay. All right. Any questions? Um, if not, I'll entertain the motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve to award the Public Safety Building Construction Renovation Project to expand the evidence room on the second floor of the Sap to Sapelo Building Solutions Incorporated of Brunswick, Georgia, in the amount of eighty eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars with funding to be provided by the capital fund allocation for at large post one. Second, item 22 has been motioned and properly second um, to be approved as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, let's have it. Item 23, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners award contract to GWES LLC. I guess that's GWES. For the Summersby Point Road, Roadway and Drainage Improvement Project design in the amount of $69,300, with funding to be provided by the American Rescue Plan Act. Sure, this, is a, uh, this has been a SPLOS project uh, for a few years, and uh, we looked at an opportunity through the American Rescue Act to move this forward and address this issue. If you see the, the picture, give you kind of an idea of what the neighborhoods look like. They're kind of uh, uh, low and uh, it, the, the roads need to be redone, but it's more than the roads. The drainage needs to be fixed in there, the catch basins, the, the, and uh, it was just uh, not uh, well built at the time and uh, built on some gumbo, and so we have some issues, and, but we need somebody to go in there, look at it, and come back with a recommendation on how to fix, and then we bring that back uh, and then bid that out. Uh, GWES is the uh, is the organization that helped uh, do the drainage, village drainage, they designed the village drainage project one and two. So uh, uh, we were happy with that project, and we look forward.
for the work of form. Uh, these are uh, American Rescue Projects. I talked with uh, Jason. They all need to be uh, bid out for uh, for design services, and then we come out and bid them out for construction. All right. Any any other questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain the motion. Move to recommend the Board of Commissioners award a contract to GWES LLC for the Summersby Points Roadway and Drainage Improvement Project in the amount of $69,300 with funding to be provided by the American Rescue Plan Act. Second. Item 23 um, has been motion and seconded as to be approved as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, sir. All right. Thank, thank you, you Item 24, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve change order number four for the Canal Road Widening Project contract with the EMC Engineering in the amount of $44,000 and authorize an additional $1,000 to EMC Engineering for appraisal update with funding to be provided by Splosh 2016. Pam Thompson. Oh. Paul Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Paul? Um, right. This item is a uh, follow-on to the project we're working on to uh, widen Canal Road and improve the intersection at Canal and Heritage Riggers. Uh, this came about by uh, Last year, y'all authorized moving forward with the design of the roundabout, which included the roundabout and a tie back to Heritage Riggers. In order to facilitate getting the right of way conveyed at the airport, is uh, existing Canal Road as it heads north needs to be moved out of a, uh, one of their um, protection zones at the runway. I was expecting to do that with the widening of Heritage Riggers, but Airport Commission has asked that we move it into this project so they can use that as uh, incentive to convey that uh, needed right of way for the roundabout and the alignment of ferry triggers to the county. So that's going to that's going to be a, um, a leverage to then used as a on our side of the uh, balance sheet when we look at conveying that right of way. They they've got to get with the uh, Federal Aviation Commission. And explain how this is a benefit to the airport. The addition of the moving of the right of way will be that advantage for the airport, moving that public road out of their flight path. But this is the design to bring it into the current project so that we can then move forward with the airport commission, get the right of way conveyance started so that we'll be in track to get the roundabout movement. As part of the acquisition for that, uh, the also includes uh, design and uh, we're going to include some driveways for the parcel on the other side of the um, of the intersection as part of our negotiations. They prefer us to include it in this project and we're subtracting out the costs from their offer. So it will be less money, including some work in this project. And the $1,000 one of the parcels that we're still working to acquire on the widening section. Um, the appraisal that was done on that has uh, gotten too old and we need to update that appraisal. That's the thousand dollars. The MC was contracted to do those. They subcontracted it out, but since we have that relationship, we're going to work through that to get the appraisal updated so we can continue with the acquisition on that side. All right. Well, now, which end, which end is this, Paul? Is this down where the roundabout's going to be? It is. Yes, sir. So it's not down where we've already given EMC enough, a bump to That's change? Right. This is, this is um, uh, on the Harry Trigger's end of the, we're, we're moving north from the okay. roundabout. And like I said, this is that, this is that section of Canal, of Canal Road, the little two-lane section that runs down by the airport and gets to uh, half a dozen or so parcels back there and, and uh, the, the only other question I got we're paying we're paying EMC to obtain the right-of-way no, to do the appraisal appraisal 
they, they've already, they, their subcontractor already did the new appraisal. It just has the time. Well, we got four attorneys. I don't understand why we're paying somebody to, uh, I, I don't get that part of it, but I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. I'm saying the motion. I move to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve with the change order number four for the Canal Road widening project contract with EMC Engineering in the amount of $44,000 and authorize an additional $1,000 to EMC Engineering for appraisal update with funding to be provided by SPLOS 2016. Second, um, item 24 has been motioned and properly second to be approved as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Any, Thank you, I don't see anything in, that doesn't need to be on I don't either. All right. Everything goes on consent. And you got the meeting schedule. Yeah, I, I did. I already put it in my phone. <laughs> so. Are you, you're going to send that out, aren't you? Like y'all normally well, do? You certainly can. Please. All right. We're, we're adjourned. Are you off? <laughs>